Welcome back to another episode of the MCHD Paramedic Podcast 360. I'm Dr. Rob Dixon, Medical Director for the Hospital District, and this is Brad Ward, one of our clinical specialists. Hi, Brad. Hello. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the coronavirus. Um, this is the COVID-19 is the new novel coronavirus, uh, really first discovered about, uh, I don't know, 12 weeks ago in China and has since become spread to really become community spread pandemic. Um, a little bit about this virus. We're not going to get into a lot of the details of it. The most important detail for you is, is first responders is this is a droplet virus. So how does it spread? I am sick with the, the COVID-19. I have a sneeze or a cough. I sneeze all over this mask. Um, and then while we're doing this demonstration, uh, Brad picks up said mask and puts it on his face to demonstrate it. Or he touches it and then he goes to eat lunch uh, without washing his hands and then gets it on it's on his hands the droplets the spitule droplets are on his hands and he puts his hands in his mouth so it's droplet spread that's the the majority of the way these cases spread in this virus it can aerosolize how does it aerosolize any type of high pressure uh, airway maneuver and brad is going to is here to kind of go over those maneuvers or, or that potentially could aerosolize this and then show you how to limit your risk and exposure while doing that. So like Dr. Dixon said, uh, it's a droplet spread disease, but the, the main way that we can aerosolize it is with airway management procedures. So we wanna be as safe as we can. If you have to intubate somebody or if you have to put CPAP on them, that just necess necessitates that you get in their face, which is right where the coughing and the, the sneezing happens. Um, any sort of deep suctioning is also has the potential to um, aerosolize the particles. So. What we've decided to do is, number one, you should always wear the appropriate PPE when performing those procedures. So you're gonna to wanna to have a gown, an N95 mask, goggles or a face shield, and a gown. We also have these filters which go on any sort of advanced airway equipment. So they go on the end of an ET tube or in a CPAP circuit. So that's what we're gonna talk about. I have a couple of them to show you. We have two different kinds floating around in our service because they came from two different vendors. They look very similar, a little bit different, but they both do the same thing. The most important thing is in everyday operation, they need to go as close to the patient as possible. So you have the CPAP mask. They don't have the straps on here so it doesn't distract. And then the circuit goes on the outside of the filter. So it goes patient, mask, filter, and then the rest of whatever circuit you're using. So this is an example of a disposable CPAP set. We carry a more permanent type CPAP with our ventilator circuit, so it's a little more complicated. This is the elbow that attaches to either the ET tube or the CPAP mask, and this is the exhalation port. So once again, if you're using a CPAP mask, you have the mask on the patient, you have the filter right there, and then you have your circuit after that. Making sure you have a good mask seal is also very important. In the case of intubation, you want to have your circuit your end title and then you want to have your filter and your ET tube. Be real careful with how this plays out with your patient when they're intubated because it will extubate them when it gets a little bit cumbersome. We have a deep suctioning device that we use in our service, which has a flexible elbow to it. And so one option we've given our providers is to attach this correctly to the circuit to give you a little bit more flexibility so it doesn't pull quite so hard. So at MCHD, we do not recommend that you routinely nebulize any medications during this COVID crisis. Why is that? Because every time we put this nebulizer under high pressure oxygen or air, it's going to aerosolize this. In the event you have a respiratory patient that's in frank respiratory failure that you think would benefit from a neb, Brad's gonna show you how you safely set up this kit uh, for an inline nebulizer using the uh, filters. So this is one instance where you're gonna have to break the rule of the filter goes closest to the patient because your filter will effectively filter out your neb if it's on the other side. So you have your ET tube that's attached to your patient. This is a little bit of rigging that we have to do. We use our flexible elbow on the end of it and then a blue T adapter 
that allows us to hook our nebulizer up like that. Then you have your filter, followed by your end title, which you then attach to your circuit. Once again, this is a lot of things to put together, but the flexible elbow lets you have just a little bit of leeway, but watch movement in the back of the truck and movement of the patient so that you don't accidentally extubate your patient. Thank you, Brad. Last thing we're going to show you guys is we the other way that we can nebulize or aerosolize uh, this virus is even by a high flow non rebreather. So anything that's flowing over six liters per minute can aerosolize this. So what we've done here at MCHD and our, our first responder groups is we put the mask on and someone that's hypoxic and respiratory failure, you want to put them on high flow O2, go ahead and put the mask on as usual. I'll put this mask on. And then Brad is going to properly put on a surgical mask. So if I'm aerosolizing, I'm breathing in and breathing out. Some of the virus may aerosolize out these exhalation ports, but Brad is going to mitigate that. So one thing you're going to want to do, especially in this model of non-rebreather, is you have the oxygen tubing sticking out front. That's going to get in the way of your mask. You want to go ahead and turn that to the side to where it doesn't stick out as much. And then you put a surgical mask on the patient, just like you normally do over your ears, like that, and make sure that there's a tight fit across the bridge of the nose and pull down over that way. So it catches the exhalation ports on the non-rebreather. Thank you, Brad. Yes, sir. So that's a little bit of a video on um, how to set up these inline filters. It's very, very important, especially during this virus outbreak that we, A, try to do what we can to protect ourselves. That's where our uh, PPE, so gown, gloves, mask, and eyewear to protect ourselves from aerosolizing by limiting those procedures that we know are high risk of aerosolization of this, which is deep suctioning, nebulized medications, or any really invasive airway maneuver. One of the other ways, and you can watch our other uh, Podcast 360 video, is uh, we developed a, a protocol to uh, use multi-dose inhalers and to build one of these, uh, essentially this is a adapter and face, or a spacer and face mask out of your existing uh, kit that you have on the truck to nebulize medications. Please check that out. It's on our YouTube channel. Uh, thanks for viewing and uh, as always, if you like us, please give us a share, give us a five on our, uh, our rating and uh, send us any questions to podcast at mchd-tx.org. Brad, thanks for coming on, and we'll yes, talk to you again soon.